name is Kathleen Moore, and I had the great privilege of being the senior author on uh, an oral abstract that was presented today known as Checkmate 358. Uh, and this is actually a presentation of an ongoing uh, phase 1B study that is looking at two different combinations of immunotherapy in the treatment of advanced and recurrent cervical cancer. So the data that was presented today uh, by Anna uh, Okanen looks at uh, the two arms, both of which have nivolumab and ipilimumab, so an anti-PD-1 and an anti-CTLA-4 antibody uh, at different dosing schedules, uh, but both in patients with either recurrent or advanced cervical cancer. Unique to this study is the fact that they, for really the first time, allowed uh, patients who had no prior uh, chemotherapy, systemic chemotherapy for recurrent disease. So patients could have had prior uh, chemotherapy with the radiation and then recurred subsequent to that, but not have had um, what would be the, the considered the standard of care, paclitaxel, cisplatin, bevacizumab. If patients refused chemotherapy, they could come on the study. And we actually had um, about half the patients, each arm had a little over uh, 40 patients, and about half of those in each arm were what we would consider systemic therapy naive. And we haven't really studied that, that population. We've really only studied cervix cancer where it's once patients have progressed beyond that standard of care where it's incredibly difficult to get responses. Uh, so this is a, a novel aspect to this study. And what really the key take homes from Checkpoint 358 are uh, that both combination regimens were very effective in both populations. When you look at the group of patients that we'll call systemic treatment naive, the response rates were close to 40%, 38% range. Uh, and so, and, and several uh, uh, incidences of complete clinical responses, including one that was shared um, during the meeting. Uh, and so that's a very kind of interesting finding in the durability of those responses and the medium, medium progression-free survivals for those patients who are systemic chemotherapy and naive mirrors what you see with chemotherapy. And so there's not a control arm here, so we can't say that this replaces chemotherapy, but it does give us a signal that it might be time to consider a clinical trial where you take a, um, a combination such as this and put it up against chemotherapy and see what the efficacy and side effect profiles might be. This uh, chemotherapy-free treatment regimen may be something that our patients are really interested in, in um, taking advantage of. So that was one of the key findings. The other key finding was that we saw responses uh, and clinical benefit regardless of PDL1 expression. So patients came on with known HPV uh, related cancers and we retrospectively looked at PDL1 testing. Uh, and quite a substantial number were positive, but also about a third were negative, and they still had responses. So uh, even though the current uh, indication for pembrolizumab in second line cervix cancer requires PDL1 positivity, our study suggests that patients benefited from the combination regardless of PDL1 uh, positivity. So that's another important finding that of course will need to be validated, but it does offer an expanded opportunity uh, for patients to potentially receive immunotherapy regardless of that particular biomarker. And then the third key finding from this was, uh, again, cross trial comparisons are illegal. I'm going to do it anyway. When you look at the pembrolizumab approval, which is based on a pretty small study, uh, it's in PDL1 positive patients, and the response rate's about 14%, and duration of response is about nine months. And that led to the approval, and we're happy about that. Checkmate 358 with either combination had response rates above 20%, actually above 25%, with very durable responses, uh, very durable duration of response in both of those um, combinations, regardless of the dosing. So again, I don't think we can say it's superior to pembrolizumab, but at least compares favorably and may um, sort of really open the door for a, a confirmatory trial, really demonstrating that the combination expands um, the indication for immunotherapy and cervix cancer and also expands the percentage of patients who are likely to benefit and for how long. Again, this was a, even though it was two arms with two different combinations, it's effectively kind
kind of two single arm studies without a control. So we have to acknowledge that we don't have the control versus standard of care in either setting. But this was a very um, nice signal finding study, very much higher response rates than are expected, nice durability of response, benefit regardless of the biomarker. Uh, so definitely a lot of uh, opportunities for um, confirmatory trials and expanding the indication for immunotherapy and really what I think we'd all agree is a high unmet need.